I'm Jay Murphy and I'm a student here at the Gene Haas Advanced Manufacturing Center at Meridian Community College. Every month we partner up with Practical Machinists to deliver educational videos. So make sure you like and subscribe to the Practical Machinists channel. And if there's an idea that you would like to see in the future, drop that in the comments. Today we're going to be talking about the basics of five axis machining and DWO, or dynamic work offsets. So first we're going to talk about what the two additional axes are on five axis machining. And today we're going to be using this UMC 500 super speed. And so the extra axes we have right now are going to be the B and the C axes. Now your C axis rotates around your Z. So it will make your workpiece spin 360 degrees or up to 360 degrees clockwise. And then your B axis is going to make the whole thing come up to where your workpiece is now sideways at a 90 degrees or whatever you give it. All right, and to kind of demonstrate that, we will move the table around. So we're going to type in, we'll start with demonstrating the C axis. So we're gonna type in C and we will do 45 and that's gonna move our, that's gonna rotate our table to 45 degrees, which is an absolute co uh, coordinate, it is not incremental. Now our workpiece is at 45 degrees because it rotated around the Z axis, which is the C axis. So we're gonna put that back at zero. And then now I'm gonna show you how the B axis moves. We will move it to, let's just do 45 degrees. And you will notice it tilt kind of like that. So that's your B axis. All right, so real quick, we're gonna do rectangular block probing operation to get our zero point in the center, which I've also marked with a marker on the actual workpiece. Then after that, we will talk about dynamic work offsets, and I'm going to demonstrate how the plane on which your X and Y coordinates reside moves with the workpiece when you call your DWO or dynamic work offset with a G254. So we're going to talk about how the zero point and your plane moves with your workpiece as it's rotating on the B axis. So I've drawn this out, probably can't really see it, but I've got your axis with your zero, uh, your zero, zero, X positive, Y positive, X positive, Y negative, X negative, Y negative, X ne negative, Y positive on here. And so if you put it in the machine, this is the way it would sit, of course, on top of your workpiece because we probe, probed it in with our zero point in the center. And then you have your, your Y positive, Y negative, X negative, X positive right here. And then what happens when we shift this on our B, your workpiece is going to move like this, but your plane is actually gonna stay flat. So it's gonna move like this. And so we're gonna kind of demonstrate that a little bit. We'll move this to, we'll do B90. And so right now, instead of your plane being sideways like this, it is actually now this way, which means 
that all of your x negative coordinates will be off of your material because your x zero is on the top of your part or the side of your part. And then if you go into your x positive, you're going to be hitting material. Now the other interesting thing about this that you have to remember is that your the top of your workpiece from this view is now an inch above your zero point. So if you're trying to do an operation on the on this face of your part, then your z is going to need to be at z1 point or less than that if you're cutting into it. Now your y you don't really have to worry about in this particular scenario because of the way we probed it in. And so what I'm going to do now is to further demonstrate this is I'm going to take this tool and I'm going to write a simple MDI program, move it around with some coordinates to show you exactly where it needs to go to find different places. All right, so I've moved the machine back to B0, or the workpiece back to B0. And I'm going to type a simple program. Basically, I'm going to bring this tool to X0, Y0, and I'm going to do Z1 to keep it an inch above the part to keep from crashing. So I'm going to call up the tool offset for this one, which is uh, tool 2. Then I'm going to tell the machine G54 x0, y0, z, one point. All right, so in this position, we are at our zero, zero, and with the tool being an inch above the part. Um, so I'm gonna send the tool home and then reposition on my B and we'll show you how you can find your zero, how you can get back to your zero point while you're in that position. So I'm gonna go to zero return, home. We'll do our table to 90 degrees. And just to kind of demonstrate an error that you're gonna run into if you try to jump straight into this. So if I tell it X zero, Y zero, it should position above this line. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to do that. But I'm gonna leave the Z where it's at. and then you'll notice something is wrong. So, if you tell it X0, Y0, it's trying to go back to where the X0, Y0 was originally put. The way you bring it to its new location, the new zero point location, is you have to call your DWO, your dynamic work offset. And you do that by calling a G254. And the way you turn dynamic work offset off is by calling G255. So I'm going to use that to bring our tool. We're going to do two inches above your zero point because remember one inch and we're going to be touching material. So we're going to do exactly like we did before. All right, so I've put in G43802 to call it the tool height offset. And then I've got my coordinate G54 X0 Y0 Z two point. But before I move to that coordinate, I need to call my dynamic work offset with G254. And so again, what that's going to do is tell the machine that our, z that our zero point is now down here, not right here. If you don't call that, make sure you have your brown pants on because you're going to be machining into your table. So we're going to move it now, 25% rapid to be safe. And so you can see it. And you will see that the tool is now 
one inch above the workpiece and write on zero X and zero Y. Uh, 